Now, without knowing any CAD, you can put your name or logo onto a 3D print with Prusa Slice's SVG emboss tool. Today, a guide plus an update on the Prusa XL. I think we're currently in a golden age of 3D printing slicing software, with powerful new features being released all the time, like the one we'll be exploring today in Prusa Slicer that reduces the need for you to learn 3D modeling tools. But first, a quick good news update about the Prusa XL. My video last week was on the topic of my Prusa XL5 tool and how I was struggling with it, including excessive stringing, the tool change strategy causing blobs to contaminate multicolor prints, as well as the occasional layer shift. Not long after my video came out, a new version of Prusa Slicer was released, 2.7.0 Beta 1. Headlining the update are a change to travel moves to help with stringing and oozing. Firstly, something Prusa calls ramping lift, similar to, but ultimately unrelated, to a concept I previously experimented with called diagonal Z-hop. In essence, it's a way of having Z-hop for travel moves, without the vertical lift that can really add to stringing. To go with that, we had a helical movement when moving to the next layer. Something, as the notes say, adopted from Bamboo Studio. I was pretty keen to try this out, so I sliced the same multicolor Marlin model, and as we can see in the preview, we have the new travel moves in place. As the printer was doing its thing, the result looked much improved, and I was quite optimistic. And when the print was complete, it was clear that it was one of the best versions that I've done. There was still a little bit of fine stringing there, much improved over what I'd seen in the past, and the colour contaminating blobs were completely missing. Regarding the stringing, I noticed I was printing with the Prusament PLA preset instead of my own TT PLA, which drops the print temperature down to 190. So I run the print again, expecting less stringing, but all of a sudden I was back to the blobby mess. So I opened up both the new and older versions of Prusa Slicer and started comparing all of the filament settings back to back and this is where I discovered a vital difference between the two versions. We can see on the newest beta that ramming is enabled for multi-tool setups, and according to the release notes, this was previously disabled for multicolor single nozzle printers, but now it's available for the Prusa XL and turned on by default. We can see what this does by observing the print. When a certain color is finished for that layer, instead of immediately doing the tool change, we have a travel move back to the wipe tower where a small amount of filament is deposited, the tool change then takes place well away from the model and removing the chance of any blobs. You might recall in my last video, I proposed a feature just like this, but given the timing of the software release, my video had no influence and Prusa were already exploring the same type of solution. And now with this one small change, the performance of the tool changing has been transformed. My custom profile still had this turned off, hence the blobbing returned. You might have noticed in my first test model, these artifacts across the top corner of the model and we can see that this coincides with the color and position of the new spiral lift movements. And I actually got my best fish result by turning off ramping lift and the spiral lift along with it, along with the lower 190 degree PLA temperatures, and that netted me this marlin, which is by far my best one of these test prints to date. There's still a little bit of fine stringing, maybe that's from the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I'll keep trying to tune a little bit more, but it's clear the XL is more sensitive to stringing than all of my other 3D printers. Another change to the default profiles was this enormous 20mm retraction before a tool change. And previously, people were saying on the Prusa forums that a retraction of around 11 here would eliminate the need for a wipe tower entirely. I tested a value of 11 for the first video, and I tested it twice more with the current 20 value for this one, and results diminish without a wipe tower. So a big step forward to where the XL should have been all along in terms of print quality, and my only complaint is that the spiral lift is stuck on by default whenever you use ramping travel, and based on my testing, on certain models that might be problematic. If this was how things were from the beginning, how different it would have been. And while myself and some of my patrons have only received our printers in the last couple of weeks, and therefore will experience success quickly, there's no denying that the printer was released incomplete for those who have had it for months now. I am using the XL for all of the prints in this video as an ongoing evaluation. So let's move on to SVG embossing. So the feature that's the subject of today's video actually came out in the 2.7.0 alpha release, and that's the incredible SVG embossing tool. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, and it makes sense to cover what exactly that is before we proceed. 
Most of us are familiar with the raster graphics like we see on this version of the logo on the right. The image is made up of pixels and if we zoom in far enough, it degrades and becomes pixelated. This same version of the logo on the left is made up of vector graphics. And no matter how much we zoom in, it's just redrawn and will never degrade, keeping its perfectly smooth edges. Whereas a raster file format like JPEG or PNG stores the color data for an array of pixels that make up the image, for a vector image it's closer to what we do in CAD when we sketch and dimension some geometry. We know we have straight lines, arcs, we know their sizes and positions, so it doesn't matter how much we zoom in or out, it's simply redrawn, keeping those same parameters. And if we look inside an actual SVG, we can see exactly this. We have paths defined with different coordinates and the relationships between them. Whereas if we look at the data that makes up a raster image, what I'm saying is simplified here, but what we have is a list of color data that covers all of the pixels. SVG is a perfect format for creating 3D shapes, because just like if we use CAD software, we can start with 2D geometry and we can extrude it to become 3D and that will give us defined crisp edges, perfect for 3D printing. Now we know what an SVG is, so let's use them. Our first option is to create the graphics in 2D using a vector graphics program. This logo and all of those that I create are done in Adobe Illustrator. And if I click the shapes, we can see the vectors that make up the graphics. A completely free alternative is called Inkscape and I've linked it below in the description. These programs should be able to natively save in SVG format. If you're looking to use an existing logo, you can always type in what you want, followed by SVG into Google. For instance, this McLaren logo is located on Wikimedia Commons, and we can simply right click the original file and save it. Sometimes an SVG just won't be available, and we can convert a JPEG, but it's important that we make sure it's as large as possible. Here we've got a large raster version that we can now convert. I've used this free converter before and it works absolutely fine if you can ignore the ads. As you can see, we can start with a JPEG or any other format such as a PNG and then convert to an SVG. I've selected the PNG I just saved and now I'm gonna convert it. And when it's done, I can download. If we open up the result in Illustrator, we can see it's not quite as good as a native SVG. For instance, it's slightly misshapen in some of the narrow areas, but for a free option, we certainly can't complain. And just a reminder, the bigger the source image, the more accurate the trace will be. And if you're after text instead of a logo, you don't need an SVG. The slicer will handle it natively, so let's start with that. We're in Prusa Slicer, I've imported a 3D Benchy and I've scaled it up to 200%. What I'm going to do now is to right click on it, come to add part and then select text. And what we have on the left here is an interface for helping us place and position the text. Most of this I would say is quite intuitive. We can drag and position the text and it will try and snap to the surface automatically. Of course, we can edit what the text is by typing it into this box. We can make it bold, italic, and even change the font. We also have controls for changing the size. And if we expand the advanced section, we get a lot more options to play with. Let's move it around to the curve section and then tick use surface. And as you can see, it will try and wrap it around to follow the curvature. Perglyph does a similar job. I think by treating each letter as a separate entity. I'm going to fiddle a little bit more with my positioning and I'm also going to reduce the depth because this is sticking out far too much. Let's say you accidentally click off the text. We can get back to editing it by coming over to the right hand panel, right clicking and selecting edit text. There are some operation options down the bottom but we're going to play with those later in the video. Before you print, take care to make sure the letters are attached as you think they are. For instance, you can see here a couple of places that are floating above the model surface. So instead of per glyph, I've switched to use surface, which seems to be much more reliable in this case at least. Here's the finished print. Overall, it's not too bad and the text is pretty good. But once again, we can see these bumps on the surface. And once again, they seem to match where the spiral lift breaks the perimeter of the model, leaving a blob. That means to improve print quality, I need to turn off ramping lift altogether as that will also disable spiral lift. I really hope that we get independent control of these two settings in an upcoming release. Simple text is super easy, an SVG logo just as much. So let's move on to adding a logo. And here we have a model of an F1 car that a student designed several years ago. We're gonna click on the model, right click, once again come to add part, and this time select SVG. We select our file and then we have a similar range of tools as we did with the text. The first thing I'll do is shrink it down to a more appropriate size. We can drag the bar or click the edit button 
and this will allow us to type in an exact measurement. Like before, we can click and drag it around and it will try its best to face the normal of that surface. And also like before, we have a use surface button to make the extruded SVG curve to follow the contours of the model. I want this to be subtle, so I'm going to reduce the depth to 0.6 millimeters, spin the camera to the side and position this in the best spot. I then spun this model around and added the same logo to the other side pod, matching the depth as well as the size. Like with text, it's always worth rotating the model and checking the preview. In terms of the logo embossing, I think this one turned out really well. I think for any of these prints, the larger the better, but at this size I think it's viable and it still looks quite clean. The print overall is reasonable, but once again we have that fine stringing. So that worked great, but now let's test a variation. I'm going to right click, edit the SVG, and this time change the operation from join to cut. From this point, the preview won't be accurate until we slice the model. And after this, we can see that our SVG is now cutting into the surface model at the depth that we set. I spun the model around and made the logo on the other side match, and that got me once more at the ready to print stage. And here it is done. I think it's not too bad, but I probably prefer the positive version rather than making the cut. However, maybe that's just my taste, and the best option will probably depend on what model you're printing. I think that covers the main use cases, but there are still some other options available. I'm now going to use this print in place F1 race car by Papa Bear AZ. Here it is in its correct orientation for printing sitting on the bed. I'm going to follow the same steps to right click, add a part, and then select SVG. I've got my logo in position and this effect is going to be more subtle. Think of this like writing a name on your kid's toy. I'm going to change the operation from the default join, this time to modifier. Again, the preview won't show much until we complete some more actions. So next to our SVG, let's come over and click the icon for editing. I'm going to come down to add settings and I'm going to go to fuzzy skin. I'm going to tick all three, click OK, and then down the bottom, turn fuzzy skin on for the outside walls and make the point distance finer as this gives a more subtle texture. Let's slice, and then we can see in our preview that our SVG is applied as fuzzy skin only to the regions where it overlapped. This one proved difficult to print. I had to increase the Z lift and add a brim because the corners of the overhangs were curling up and being knocked off the bed. So let's remove the brim and have a closer look at the print. Now we can see that these overhangs really were struggling on the XL. Fitting five tools makes things tight and therefore we don't have the largest part cooling fan. But then the duct is also quite basic and as you can see it's partially blocked by the silicon sock. There are some community duct mods available that I will be trying. You'll also notice that I experienced yet another layer shift up the top of the model. There's a theory in the community that I tend to agree with. It's a false positive on fast travel moves, causing the current tool to rehome and then continue printing in a slightly different position. And I agree with this because I've heard it happen during the start G-code sequence with nothing for the nozzle to hit. Therefore, I'm turning it off for now. Print quality issues aside, I think this embossed SVG with fuzzy skin does a really good job at labeling products without really changing their overall shape. For a multicolor test, I selected this helmet by Jester80. As well as importing and placing an SVG logo, I also imported a cylinder to act as a cut. And if you have a multicolor printer, you can simply double click to change which filament is used for the SVG or other parts of the model. And I wanted a different color inside the R and for the visor, so I selected the model and came to the painting tool. The smart fill was pretty effective at filling in large areas, except on the portion inside the R, so for that section I had to manually brush it on. The printed result was great on one side, but the logo didn't go as expected. Firstly, the red just stopped extruding part way through. It still seemed to be intact the whole way through to that tool, but there was another problem where the outside of the SVG was only on the surface and therefore was quite jagged. I noticed when using the previous method that anything I painted on extended through to the center of the model, whereas the SVG in white that was simply selected as a different color was only on the surface. So for best results, I think you're better off taking the time to paint each of the areas you want to be a different color, even though technically it's a separate object. That way, the SVG will be anchored a lot further into the model and should be printed more consistently. And this really did a good job of cleaning up the white for the reprint, but this time the red didn't print at all. This red is a really old spool of filament, so I don't think it's fair to blame that on the printer. You'll note too that where the angle gets very shallow, that you start to see the color underneath, 
so food for thought when it comes to positioning. I wanted to test one more big print with this yelling bearded Buddha created by a savage rodent. I scaled this one up and placed the Teaching Tech logo right on its belly. These segments are very thin, which is not ideal, but I do like the way it follows the curvature of the belly button. For this one, I chose some special filament, a brand new roll of this Polylight Dual Silk PLA. As the name suggests, each side of the filament is a different color, and you can see it changes from purple to green as I tilt it back and forth. This was my longest print on the XL so far, at a little under 13 hours. And I think the result, especially with this filament, is pretty stunning. There are some sections on the back that could have done with support, so that's my fault. But unfortunately, there's also some fine stringing, despite this being a brand new spool of filament out of the bag. In terms of the embossed logo, I think it looks pretty reasonable. I'll clean it up a little bit, and like I said earlier, these tiny segments were always going to make it hard. One more thing, obviously this video was about Prusa Slicer, so we should expect this feature to trickle down to Bamboo Studio, Orca Slicer, and perhaps Super Slicer in future. But if you are using a different slicer, there's still a way that you can get this to work. Assuming you're using the join operation for adding your SVG, you can come to File and then export the plate as an STL. And when you do so, the 3D geometry will be saved with the SVG embossing in place, ready to import into another slicer. I'm feeling some relief that the Prusa XL has improved and I'll update where relevant in future videos. As for this text and SVG embossing, whether it's adding branding to a generic model or perhaps customizing a gift, there's huge potential for this powerful feature. So thank you to the Prusa Slicer team for their continued innovations and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy SVG embossed 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.